In this video, we'll present a model of how children learn to read words. This model was developed by Linnea Airy. The full name for this model is the Continuum of Word Reading Development, but we'll refer to them as Airy's Phrases for short. The prior knowledge that you'll need to apply in order to understand this model includes phonemic awareness, orthographic mapping, and decoding. There are some new terms that we'll go over later too. Here are the big ideas for this video. We'll cover the five phases in Aries model and how children progress through them as they learn to read. We'll also cover the importance of learning the alphabetic principle in order to be able to recognize words automatically or on site. Let's start with a review of that key background knowledge. Phonemic awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate individual phonemes. Phonemic awareness is one of the levels of phonological awareness. Remember that these two terms are not interchangeable. Orthographic mapping is the mental process of storing words and their sounds for immediate and effortless retrieval. Decoding is the ability to convert a word from print to speech using sound spelling knowledge. Remember that sound spelling knowledge is the same as phoneme grapheme correspondences or sound spelling relationships. Now let's learn these new terms that you'll need to know. The alphabetic principle is the understanding that speech sounds and letters link to one another. This seems really basic and it's not always obvious when children have picked up this principle, but it's definitely a requirement for being able to decode, read words, and develop automaticity and fluency in reading. Phoneme grapheme correspondence is the process of matching phonemes in words with the graphemes that represent them. This is a term that you'll see a lot in this course, but you may also see the terms sound spelling relationships or phoneme grapheme mapping. These all mean the same thing. Just don't confuse phoneme grapheme mapping with orthographic mapping. Sight words are words that an individual student recognizes instantly and effortlessly. This is another really common term, but it's not always used accurately. Let's look at where some of the confusion comes from and try to clear it up. First of all, the words that an individual student knows on site are just that, individual. There are lots of grade level lists of sight words out there that say all students should know these, and those can be a useful guide. But which words become sight words and when is dependent on the individual student's reading development, not on a list. So in a classroom, having all of the students use the same master list of sight words is actually not meeting those individual students where they are. Depending on a lot of different factors, including how much exposure to print and reading a student has had, not all of those students are going to develop the same sight word knowledge at the same pace. Another confusing thing about sight words is the belief that sight words are only words that are not decodable or that have irregular spellings. This idea makes sense, but the truth is that only a very few words in English are truly never decodable. With a strong foundation in code-based instruction or phonics instruction, students will learn to apply their phonemic awareness, orthographic mapping, and decoding skills to all unfamiliar words. Now that we've defined those key terms, let's dive into Aries phases. There are five phases in Aries continuum of word reading development. These phases are common to most typically developing children from approximately ages four to six. The borders between phases are not really solid borders. The skills and information that children learn about and use, learn to use overlap across phases. As children progress through these phases, their orthographic mapping also expands. The first phase is the pre-alphabetic phase. During this phase, students are exploring all of the print around them. They quote-unquote read environmental print. An example of this is seeing a stop sign and knowing it says stop, not because of decoding the letters, but because of recognizing the shape and colors of the sign. Children also recognize logos in this phase. They may or may not know the letters in the word McDonald's, and they definitely can't decode it, but they recognize the logo. Guessing based on clues like these is a common part of this phase. As children learn more about letters and sounds and how they work together, they don't need to rely on guessing or memorization as much. This is also when we see children reciting books that are familiar to them. It looks a lot like reading, and that rehearsal is important, but children don't yet have the knowledge they need to decode and read those books. 
Children in this phase also start attempting to write letters and words, and they can decide what their writing means, although to readers they may not look clearly like words. In the second phase, the partial alphabetic phase, children are improving and expanding their knowledge of the alphabet in sequence, as well as starting to identify individual letters. Children in this phase also start to identify individual letters within words, even though they're not decoding the whole word yet. This is why it's called the partial alphabetic phase. In this phase, children have learned a few sight words, but when they see them in text, they may often confuse those words with words that look similar, share letters, or start with the same letter. Next is the later or full alphabetic phase. This is when children pick up the all-important alphabetic principle. Remember, this principle is essential to being able to decode words. In this phase, children continue to learn more phoneme-grapheme correspondences and can start attempting to sound out entire words. Because they're expanding their phonemic awareness and orthographic mapping, children also in this phase will gain more automaticity and know more sight words. Children will also continue to understand letter sequences in writing, and the letters and words they attempt to write resemble real words more and more. Next is the consolidated alphabetic phase. We call it this because this is when children consolidate and generalize their phonemic awareness, expanding from recognizing correspondences between individual phonemes and graphemes into recognizing common blends, digraphs, diphthongs, etc. In this phase, children also start to recognize common basic morphemes like prefixes and start to use them to figure out new words. As children learn more and more about the code, they stop relying on guessing and memorization. We measure this by having them decode nonsense words, words that follow conventional spelling patterns and use the same sound spelling relationships but are not real or meaningful words. Children's sight word knowledge continues to grow in this phase and begins to include more and more complex and multisyllabic words. As decoding becomes more and more automatic, children begin to notice and understand common sentence structures, and syntax. The final phase in this model is the automatic phase. At this point, children can read most words quickly and accurately. Words that they don't recognize automatically, they can independently use their decoding skills to figure out, if they have been taught those skills. Because word reading has become mostly automatic at this phase, children can now start to pay closer attention to meaning and context when reading. They can also pay more attention to reading with expression and pacing when reading aloud. Now let's review the key information that we covered in this video. We examined the five phases on the continuum model of word reading development. This model shows the progression of children learning to read words. We also explain the importance of the alphabetic principle and phoneme graphing mapping in building sight word knowledge. We looked at all five phases of ARIES continuum model. This model covers ages approximately four to six. We define the terms alphabetic principle, phoneme grapheme correspondences, and sight words. We also clarified some of the misunderstandings about sight words and how children actually learn them. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.